Okay, Robert Duncan, congratulations on your recent Emmy nomination for The Whispers. Uh, it's your fourth career nod. Uh, how did it feel getting the news that you've been nominated? Uh, was, uh, I'm very excited, especially given the category. Um, writing uh, themes for TV shows is one of the most enjoyable aspects of working in television music. In fact, when I was a kid, the very first piece of sheet music I ever bought was the uh, theme to Hill Street Blues. Uh, that, that I oh, wow, that's a good one. Play on the piano. And uh, so um, to be nominated in this category, which is all my prior nominations have been for underscore for a series or a mini series. So this was especially exciting to me to be in the main title category. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about composing the main title for this show. It's kind of a supernatural thriller about children with special powers of some sort. Uh, uh, talk about creating the theme for it. Well, often when I'm asked to write music, I walk away from a meeting with a list of keywords and I try to translate these words into uh, a musical idea. And basically with the whispers, um, the two words were innocence and malevolence. Um, you know, it's a, a show about uh, kids that have a, a, an a imaginary friend that turns out to be uh, an alien um, with not great intentions. And uh, the, the show creator sort of started me off with the idea of composing a haunting melody for uh, a music box or something that would uh, convey innocence and that's that's really where I started uh, sketched the theme out on a, on a piano and then uh, moved it to a music box and once I was happy with with how that was sounding I started to uh, see what I could do to layer um, uh, other things underneath and I basically um, pulled out all my distortion pedals and started throwing in um, you know uh, electric cello and anything that I could to make it uh, gritty and, and uh, disturbing, I uh, layered underneath. And of course, uh, underneath that was, um, uh, I was lucky enough to get a live orchestra to uh, accompany those two elements. So that's really the, the, the three elements of the theme are the music box, the innocence, there's the distortion, the malevolence, and then there's the, the orchestra, which, you know, being uh, an Amblin production and Spielberg having a hand that, uh, you know, seems to come along uh, with the package. <laughs> um, yeah, when I was listening to it, uh, it, it sounded to me almost like a lullaby. Was that something that was kind of in the back of your mind? Very much so. Yeah, I wanted something that, that could be uh, pretty and, um, um, oh, you know what, actually this is, you just made me, recall I, I spent a lot of time thinking should it be sort of major or minor I mean and, and I think I, I ended up and I did that same theme both ways um, uh, but ended up with a major more sweet um, more uh, open kind of a, a harmonic sense and, and not not really tipping that anything's uh, wrong or, or negative about it um mm. uh, but just but just going for something that that was more uh pretty you know and healthy and letting the other elements bring the, the the edge okay yeah yeah so then how many passes of it did you give that i mean were, were there a lot of bad ideas that you had initially that um, you threw out or there weren't a lot of time there wasn't a lot of time for bad ideas um <laughs> the the show was one of the faster projects I've ever worked on. We we were knocking out a, a show every week, and uh, the the whole schedule was accelerated. Um, I did one concept um, first, which which they liked, but I think um, one morning I just thought, you know, I don't think this is the one, and I and I started version two, and that was the theme. It, it, um, so when I normally do themes, I usually do a lot more versions. Uh, this one came together wonderfully quickly with version mm -hmm. two, basically. Mm -hmm. And this kind of material is something that seems to be in your wheelhouse almost. Uh, I mean, a lot of your credits are things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Castle, kind of more genre materials. 
Uh, so what is it that attracts you to the shows that you do? Um, well, I love, I do love writing um, for dramatic uh, series. I love working with, it certainly is a treat to work with orchestra. Um, uh, it's interesting how some shows can seem to have similar, similar subject matter, but can treat things very differently. Buffy, for example, um, had a very specific style about addressing humor. There was a lot of humor in Buffy, but it was played very subtly. Um, my instructions as a composer, which I thought were very sophisticated, were to to be the straight the straight person in the comedy duo. Let the jokes sort of speak for themselves, and let the music support the um, the genre that it's making poking fun at at, at times. You know, the big uh, vampire fantasy supernatural stuff, and then and then all of a sudden uh, the music might trip up. A joke might get let through and then the music would pick up where it left off. And, and I really enjoyed that uh, approach to scoring. Um, the whispers, um, obviously not as much humor in, in that show. Um, the style of that show was, uh, the score was a hybrid um, electronic slash orchestral. Uh, a lot of the momentum and energy came from the electronics. And then some of the cinematic uh, gravitas would uh, get pulled from the strings in the orchestra, and we would have uh, strings, harp, and uh, woodwinds um, to to sweeten the scores with. Um, and uh, uh, it would it generally uh, would take itself fairly seriously, and um, and be uh, you know uh, cinematic and and. Uh, um, no. Mm -hmm. Very suspenseful too. Can you talk a bit about creating suspense through your music in the show? Well, there were um, <clears throat> there were several themes. One thing I've always appreciated about music is that music is great at expressing things that aren't on the screen. And this show is has a main character that isn't on the screen. I mean the. Uh, yeah. Main character travels through electrical conduits, and uh, and so music was a big part of the presence. I mean, of things that are felt but not seen. Um, so there were there were elements, there were orchestral effects that I um, let his presence uh, come through. Um, there was sort of an orchestral whispering effect that I uh, that I, I drew upon. Uh, and actually, it's it's in the theme. Um, there's a chaotic uh, um, orchestral uh, chattering at the beginning of, of the theme. It's very subtle, and it's underneath the distorted bass and the uh, music box. But uh, um, it's uh, it, it's you know it's fun to 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 you know create suspense and anticipation. Um, when you feel a character, but he hasn't revealed himself or you don't know when he's going to show up. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So take us through uh, the scoring of a typical episode. You know, how long does it take? Uh, what's your process like? Well, uh, basically, um, I normally don't see a show until it's at a uh, uh, late stage in the cut. The editor has finished a cut, the director's finished a cut, the producers have finished their cut, and they're getting ready to show it to the network and the studio. And that's usually when I just get a, a sneak peek. Mm -hmm. uh, under ideal conditions, I would then start working after the cut is uh, what's termed blocked, which means there's no further uh, changes to the timing so that I can count on if I start a piece of music at a certain time, I know that this event in the picture is not going to move. I can I can map my tempos out so that I can land a musical hit on something, and uh, and it's it's locked down. So uh, I can really arrange and plan the music confidently. Um, when you work with orchestra on a TV show, it's a little bit of an extra challenge because the logistics of working with orchestra require about four days or so for um, 
or maybe even a little more, five days, uh, a couple of days of orchestration and copying, then a day of sessions, and then a day of uh, a couple of days of score mixing, and everything's overlapping and everything's uh, chasing the dub, as we say, just just getting done right before it needs to get done. So the the schedule is um, is quite compressed. Uh, but uh, the first step for me is that initial meeting that we call a spotting session, where I sit down with the producers, uh, sometimes a writer, sometimes a director, certainly the music supervisors and the editor, and we just watch the show from beginning to end. And uh, the show has usually been cut with uh, what we call temp music, which is music uh, from either previous episodes or other projects that is a placeholder music. And that's the beginning of the conversation. We watch the show, we listen to the temp music, and the producers say, um, they'll just, we'll break down the scenes and say, okay, I, I felt like the music that we found for this scene um, isn't pulling my heartstrings enough or it's communicating the wrong emotion. I mean, really my job is to sell uh, an emotional slant to any scene and to try to, um, encourage the audience to feel the way uh, the writer and the director uh, wants the, the audience to feel about that moment or that story or that character. And so we're, uh, the composers, we're just um, trying to pull invisible puppet strings musically, trying to find those chords or those rhythms or those energies that will uh, make you resonate with that emotion. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we go through the, the show from beginning to end. My music editor takes uh, spotting notes, and then I get a, a big list of uh, how many pieces of music, what the target emotions are for each piece. And then I go back to my studio, uh, put the picture up, and hit play and watch a scene a few times and just think until somewhere inside my head a little voice will say well maybe it's this tempo and throw that tempo into the computer and then uh uh i'll sometimes i'll start sketching electronically other times i'll go into um i have a live room which is actually right behind me okay my uh oh wow in, in there and i'll uh i'll uh, uh go in there and and start uh, uh, grab an instrument and lay down a track uh, once I've you know established the tempo and maybe some basic points of where it should come in shift and then come out and uh, then I'll start sifting through the takes and see if something sticks it's like throwing pasta against the wall to see if it's ready it's kind of mm -hmm. if, it, if it makes me feel something that's close to the target emotion then I keep it you know, if it, uh, if it raises my pulse, if it uh, makes me feel anxious, um, which is a wonderful thing about doing what I do is, is uh, although I think it's, it must be a lot of fun to write music that's, whose only point is to be um, catchy and, uh, and hooky like a pop song, you know, uh, TV composers and film composers, we have to really try to understand what gets under your skin, you know, what what is the musical equivalent of nails on the chalkboard or what is the musical equivalent of, of uh, sheepishness? You know, you know, it's a, it's a different vocabulary and a different um, set of objectives than, um, than other types of, of music writing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, just a side question. Does the little voice that tells you what the music should sound like, does it sound anything at all like the invisible uh, friend in the whispers? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do know this, that it, it has a, 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 bed, a, a bedtime. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, I know it's time to go to bed when that voice disappears. <laughs> I, uh, I can stay up hours and get nowhere until I, get <laughs> and I realize that that little little person's woken up and start writing. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, congratulations well, again. Well, uh, congratulations again on the nomination. Again, and, nomination. Uh, thank and, you so uh, much for taking the time to talk to me. Oh, sure. Well, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Have a great day. Have a great day. Cool. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>